Uh, all right, so my name's Matt Patterson, and I'm the lead facilitator at the Yarra Rangers Tech School, uh, which is a part of Box Hill Institute um, in Melbourne. So last year I gave a talk at the, uh, this mini-conf about donkey cars at our tech school um, and our plans to include them in our curriculum in our classes. So this year I'm giving an update about what we've done since, uh, since then and what we also plan to do in the year ahead. Just an outline. Um, yeah, I'll start with the, um, what I'm going to be talking about. So first, um, talking about YTS, where I work. Uh, also, um, our self-driving cars activity, um, how it went, uh, what we've sort of learnt from the experience, uh, what we plan to do next, and then just a little bit about how that fits into some of the other things we're doing at the tech school. Uh, and so if you look here, uh, it's just a picture of some of our robots. Uh, on the upper right, you can see a donkey car. And on the sort of lower right, you can see a turtle bot, which is another one of our autonomous robots that I'll mention later. All right, so, so the tech school is um, a specialist center for teaching STEM. Um, so we get... Um, so secondary school uh, students from our 20 catchment schools uh, come to the tech school for excursions uh, to use our uh, sort of extensive collection of uh, the latest in um, technology um, and to explore um, activities with uh, real world uh, challenges. So... Um, we want to, what we want to do at the tech school, we want to prepare students for a changing world. Um, so, uh, schools, I think schools should be preparing students for uh, the future, uh, for the world in the future, like what kids are going to actually experience 10 or 15 years in the future, uh, not for uh, preparing students for the past. Uh, and we also want to, uh, we also want to link uh, what we're doing to growing industries, for example, in technology and robotics. Um, we co-design our programs um, with uh, industry uh, to make sure that they're relevant. Um, and we try and think, we try and make sure that our programs uh, give our students not just uh, technical skills, but also the sort of soft skills that they get from working in teams. Um, and we look at we get the kids doing different, uh, to use different sort of teaching strategies, um, so sort of project-based learning, design thinking, um, and a lot of everything is sort of group work. All right. So, how the kids? When I said about group work, uh, how the kid, how things work at the tech school? Uh, everything's done in groups of three. So we have a uh, project manager. Uh, who's in charge of how the group works together, um, a designer architect who's sort of designing, uh, thinking about what the group is creating, and a marketer or communicator uh, that's thinking about how they're going to present their ideas and sort of uh, almost like sell their ideas to the other students. Um, So we also have some VR activities. That's a little bit different. It's more individual based. Um, and we have our sort of simulation presentation room uh, where we actually try and get the, uh, we have like groups interacting with other groups um, to try and get a lot of inter-team collaboration and collaborative problem solving. All right, so uh, what we did for our self-driving cars activity. So we introduced this program called Autonomous Vehicles uh, Self-Driving Cars, uh, where you play the role of a city planner and you're looking at uh, social, technological, social and uh, ethical issues. Um, the students are exposed to like basic concepts of self-driving cars. 
teaching their, their donkey car uh, how to drive, it's very similar to what we're doing here today. Um, and also starting to think about some of the social and ethical implications of self-driving cars and how that's going to impact on the students in the future. Uh, and then finally, we have a bit of a debate uh, where we get the students to think about uh, should self-driving cars be allowed uh, on our roads? Um, and so, yeah, so in sort of keeping with our uh, conference theme of who's watching, so we want students to be thinking critically about um, technology and not just accepting the promises that uh, tech companies are giving them blindly. Um, so we want students to think about, um, yeah, think about sort of social and ethical implications. And so um, running a debate uh, gives a sort of, also it gives like a real world context uh, that students can continue to explore back at the school. Uh, so for example, we usually try and get uh, English teachers to come in for this class. And then uh, the English teachers can run the debate um, and then uh, back at school, they can continue on with um, this sort of theme. Um, yeah, and so that's just sort of the kind of debate we get them to do. Uh, they get into teams and they have a couple of minutes, uh, each have a couple of minutes to make their case. Um, yeah, and as we said, it's, uh, this is all run by the teacher, who's usually an English teacher. And so, how the activity went? Uh, so I think it went well. We've got a lot of good feedback from uh, students and teachers. Uh, you know, so I think today went really well, and I would love to come again. Um, I'd like to do it again and more. I'll rate it five stars. Anyway, uh, yeah, so in general, um, uh, people seem to enjoy the class. Uh, feedback from some of the students that was a bit different uh, from some of our other classes in a good way. Um, and my boss, the director, was very happy uh, seeing the kids so engaged. Um, yeah, so overall good. And what we've sort of learnt from this uh, class um, is uh, students really love freedom. So they love sort of roaming around, driving their cars, um, and also just uh, exploring the space and interacting with some of our other robots, like we have these uh, telepresence robots that they seem to have fun with. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of work for the students to get their cars uh, going, uh, but the students all find it really rewarding when they get their car sort of uh, driving around the track and they sort of have races to see who can get their self-driving car to go fastest. Um, in terms of uh, negatives, so we still need to create more uh, uh, flexibility in the, in the class. So it would be great to have more, as, as donkey cars get more features, um, uh, then we'll have more variety about what the students can do. Um, and if anyone has any suggestions of things that we can do with the donkey cars in the class, that would be great. Um, and also, uh, especially uh, seeing what uh, the hackerspace have done with some of the instructions and steps for this, uh, uh, for this mini conf, uh, we're going to be look at uh, ways that we can sort of streamline some of the steps for the students to do uh, for parts that aren't really critical for their understanding. Yeah, but some interesting things we found is that students really love decorating their cars with Lego. Lego figurines, uh, they add all, you know, they really want to uh, personalize their car and make it their own. Um, and so I think it's a really positive thing uh, if we can get, uh, if we could use a similar setup to these robots uh, with the Lego um, holes uh, and really let kids go wild with Lego. Um, also something we found is that initially when the kids come in, uh, the boys seem to be really enthusiastic about driving around cars. Uh, but it's interesting that as the day goes on, uh, the, the girls are also really engaged. Uh, and towards the end, it's often the girls who are most, you know, 
uh, enthusiastic about sort of racing and seeing who, if they can get the fastest time. Um, so what's next? Well, um, so we have a, a sort of smart autonomous vehicle smart city challenge uh, that we're starting up uh, uh, later on this year. Um, and so here, uh, students will basically be uh, sort of laser cutting like little houses and buildings uh, to create a mini part of the Lilydale, which is where we are uh, situated. Um, and they'll also be laying down little tracks and intersections uh, for their cars. Um, we're going to start off using these um, uh, little uh, Thymio robots from Switzerland. Um, and so here's an example of what uh, we find them useful because they sort of, the cars sort of communicate with each other. So they can just do basic sort of line following and barcode reading, but they also communicate with each other. Uh, I can show you a quick video of what some other people have been doing with this. Uh, what happened? No, maybe I won't show the video. But can I actually get back to my presentation? All right, I might have to skip the video. Um, all right, that's our Smart City Challenge. Uh, another thing that we're interested in um, is this um, uh, sort of projection mapping. So um, this on the right, that's actually from uh, MIT. Um, and the, the little city uh, buildings were all built out of Lego. Uh, and it's got a projector up the, up the top. Uh, and I think it uses um, like a connect uh, to, to get the 3D model of what's, what's underneath. Uh, and then the projector projects down different colors uh, to show different features. Um, and then we would like to obviously tie that with uh, some of the data that's available for Melbourne um, so that we can exp explore some sort of different data science type um, visualizations with a, with a real um, 3D model. Um, Yeah, so this sort of brings together data science, visualization, sort of like augmented reality, and I think it looks pretty cool. So we actually first saw this at Melbourne Knowledge Week uh, at a donkey car event. Um, so there's a group that had created a model of central Melbourne, uh, and they were projecting down on it from above. All right, so another technology we'd like to use at the tech school uh, is laser rangefinders or LIDARs. Um, so one of the new robots we have at the tech school is a, is a turtle bot, which is this one at the top. And um, so rather than use a camera like the donkey car does, um, it uses a uh, LIDAR unit. So it shines a rotating laser to detect obstacles and create a map of where it's going. Um, and this is an example down the bottom here Oh, there's a competition called Auto Race that they use with these uh, turtle bots. Uh, it has things like uh, stop signs, um, intersections, traffic lights um, that the, the uh, turtle bot can try and navigate. So that's something we'd like to start using. Um, but these uh, LiDAR, you can also attach them to the top of a donkey car. Um, and so these turtle bots use ROS, the robot operating system. Uh, you can also uh, use ROS on a um, donkey car. All right, now I don't know how much you can see of that. Um, but this is just some of the issues to do with self-driving cars that we're interested in exploring at the 
uh, tech school. So one of them is uh, road capacity. So one of the big things with self-driving cars is that it should sort of double or triple the capacity of our roads, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, also, uh, as self-driving cars become more prevalent, uh, things like insurance and fuel costs should decline. So insurance because of less accidents. Um, the other thing is that because there's uh, much reduced uh, labour costs with things like Ubers uh, and self-driving taxis, um, uh, here over this diagram at the top here, you can see that the uh, cost of a self-driving taxi uh, will drop far below the, the cost of a, um, actually owning your own car. And so they expect that uh, in the future there will actually be, um, you know, these self-driving taxis will become very popular uh, because they're so cheap. Um, another one, uh, this is uh, self-driving cars. They'll actually be able to drive uh, very close together in platoons where they're sort of each one's following the car in front. Uh, and one of the most efficient ways of doing this is if there's a truck at the front of the platoon. Um, and this is just some graphs about uh, how the fuel consumption decreases um, uh, the closer the cars to get, get together in the platoon. Um, yeah, so that's some things we want to explore. Uh, here's just uh, some pictures of some of the autonomous vehicles that we have at the tech school. Um, so in the top left, so in the middle, obviously a donkey car. Top left, these uh, Timeo robots I talked about earlier. Um, these DJI Tello drones. Uh, one thing we found with the drones is even with these uh, sort of bouncy cages around them, we still have um, some maintenance issues when we get the kids <laughs> flying them. <laughs> So we're still working on that. Um, the turtle bots, uh, these little uh, Ringo insect robots, they were the first uh, autonomous vehicles that we had when I started. Uh, and then finally, these VEX, Vex robots. Uh, it's sort of a bit like Lego. Um, but there's plastic version and a metal version. And they have some uh, competitions that the students can go in. Um, All right, so at the tech school, we're starting to use um, uh, design thinking as one of our key uh, teaching approaches. So the students start off by reach, researching and empathising with a the problem. Then they really uh, define the problem, or we define it for them if it's a shorter program. They ideate, come up with all these ideas that they put on the wall uh, with um, post-it notes uh, and prototype. <coughs> Uh, and there's a bit of a cycle of those steps and uh, also including uh, testing their ideas and finally pitching. Um, and this sort of follows along reasonably closely with the standard sort of engineering uh, industry process. Yeah. And so we're actually uh, moving towards, we have been running single day programs, but just this year we're starting to bring in uh, these uh, multi-day, three-day programs. So it starts off with a tour um, of some local, um, you know, for example, for our smart farming, going and see some farms. Um, then day two, they're doing a lot of this uh, ideating and prototyping. And the final day, uh, also doing their, their final pitch. Um, so the, the main point for doing this is just we really want, like at the end of a one-day program, we sometimes feel like these students, yep, uh, the students could just keep on um, uh, going much deeper into what they're doing. Uh, and so the, the three-day program lets students explore the challenge more deeply. All right, so just very quickly, uh, smart farming. Um, uh, so this is, uh, smart farming is a new challenge we're bringing out this year. Uh, it also involves some autonomous vehicles. Uh, we're currently using a, um, the VEX robot as a smart harvester, although I think you could easily, equally do, do a similar job with a donkey car, maybe with some, um, a lot of Lego on top. Um, 
and yeah, and this is the basic challenge that they're looking at. How what, might we use technology to grow food locally, sustainably, efficiently, and ethically? Uh, and for this, uh, basically looking at, um, so we've got autonomous vehicles, drones, uh, hydroponics, um, also sort of IoT uh, farm monitoring and control. And yeah, that's it. Cool.